Hey kids, welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. We're going over lesson two now. Lesson two is about the Pacific Ocean. So we're talking about social studies, right? We're talking about where things are and what they're like, and a little bit of the history of places. We will focus on learning about the biggest ocean in the world. The biggest ocean in the world, right? And that is the Pacific Ocean. So when we get started, let's talk about where is the Pacific Ocean? Where is it, right? Of course, we all know the Pacific Ocean is here, right? This is the Pacific o What? It's not? No. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's Africa, right? Africa is here. And that's land, right? That, we're looking for ocean, not land. Pacific Ocean isn't here, right? It's over here, right? This is the... What? It's not? Oh, yeah, okay, you're right. It's, this is the Indian Ocean. Indian. Whoops. Indian Ocean. Okay, that's a large body of water, but it's not the Pacific Ocean, right? It's the Indian Ocean. So, I'm sorry, the Pacific Ocean is over here, right? What? No, it's not? Okay, this is the Atlantic. Atlantic. Oh, see, ocean. This is the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is between uh, the Americas and Europe and Africa. So where can the Pacific Ocean be? Where? Ah, it's this big one here, right? This is the Pacific Ocean. Wow, look at it. Like I said, it's the biggest ocean in the world. It's the biggest ocean. Look at how big that is. It's huge, right? The Pacific Ocean is between the Americas and Asia uh, Indonesia and Australia down here. It's huge. That's the Pacific Ocean. Whew, we got it right. Okay, that's where the Pacific Ocean is. It's really big. It's the biggest ocean in the world. Okay, let's learn some vocabulary about the, vo about the Pacific Ocean. Okay, first vocabulary. To picture in your mind. You have many pictures in your mind, right? If you think about something, you can make different pictures. Some ideas come into your mind. So you make pictures in your mind. What are you doing? You are imagining. To imagine. Imagine. Three sounds. Imagine. And put them together quickly. Imagine. Imagine. Okay? Imagine. That's what is to picture in your mind. To imagine. <clears throat> Excuse me. To imagine. Okay, next word. Number two. Whoa, what's going on here? This is the earth and there are people all around the earth on the surface, right? To be on all sides. So something is on all sides of something. What do we say? It is surrounding that thing. Surround. Surround. You can hear two sounds. Surround. Surround. Put them together. Surround. Surround. Okay? Surround means to be on all sides. To be on all sides of something. That is to surround. Number three. Oh, this is nice. It's a day in the park. Very calm. It's calm, not violent. Whew. Right? There's no fast cars, people shooting at each other, nothing going on. It's very nice, calm. What is it? What do we say? It is peaceful. Peaceful. We have actually, it's kind of, you know the word peace, right? Peace means, hey, peace, dude, right? Peace means uh, no violence, you know, everything's calm, everybody's friendly, everybody's happy. Peace. And it's full. It's full of peace. So, peaceful. Peaceful. It's peaceful in the park. I hope so. Okay. It's peaceful in the park. Okay, moving on. Our next word here. This is a very old structure. There are many old ruins in the world. We don't know who built them or why they were built. So it's a puzzle or a secret. We don't know. If something is a puzzle or a secret, we don't know the answer to it. It is a mystery. Mystery. How many sounds? Mystery. Three sounds. Mystery. 
mystery. Mystery. Okay, put them together quickly. Mystery. It's a mystery. I don't know. It's a mystery. So when you don't know, it's a mystery. Okay, next one. Number five. Nice picture, right? Sailing on a boat. To move by boat using the wind. And I just said it, right? To sailing on a boat. To sail. To sail. These people are sailing. They are going across the water, not with an engine, right? They're not using an engine. They're using these big pieces of cloth and the wind is blowing them across the water. So they are sailing. To sail means to go across the water with the power of the wind, not with an engine, with the power of a wind of the wind. That's really what sail means. However, motorboats, big boats with big engines, people still say let's they are sailing across the Pacific Ocean, for example. Sometimes people still do that. But really the 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 first and uh, most uh, first meaning that comes to mind when you think of sail is to move across the water with wind power. Okay? Okay, so that's to sail. Next one, see-through. Now this picture is a little, um, I have to explain it a little bit. To see-through means you can see through the air very easily, right? You can see through the air very easily. Also another thing that you can see through is a window. A window you can see through the glass of a window, see through. But you can't see through the window if the window's not clear. If the window is dirty, you can't see through it because it's not clear. If it's a cloudy day or there's a lot of smoke or dust in the air, then it's not clear. It's dirty. You can't see through it. But something that you can see through is clear. You can see, wow, you can really see far and you can see very well because it's clear. Whether it's glass, whether it's air, water can be clear. You can see very clearly through water. So these things are clear. Okay. Number seven. This is an interesting picture. It looks like they're at the North Pole or maybe the South Pole. They're uh, in a boat and they're looking around. To look around and discover, especially people who go someplace for the first time, right? It's hard to discover new places in the world these days because most places have already been discovered. What do we call that? If you're going to explore something, you're discovering something. Explore. And then, of course, the person who does this is an explorer. An explorer. A hundred years ago, there were many explorers. A hundred, hundred fifty years ago, there were many explorers who explored different parts of the world and discovered many new things. Okay. Next one. Eight. Not moving much. If there's a leaf on the water and the leaf is not moving, it's just, you know, moving maybe a little bit, but not a lot, right? It's just staying still. What do we say? It's calm. Actually, we saw this word before, right? When we saw the park, it's calm and not violent, peaceful. Well, another word for peaceful is calm. Now you have these two L and M. Calm calm, right? It's calm. The water is calm. It doesn't move much. It moves a little bit maybe, but not much. Or it doesn't move at all. It's calm. No motion, no action. It's calm. Some people say calm is boring, but sometimes calm is peaceful and nice too. So it depends what you want. Okay, next one. Number nine. Wow, that is not calm. That's exciting, right? It's violent. It's, uh, uh, it's got a lot of energy, right? So, wow, this is really cool. Very cool picture. A hill of water moving across the sea. Well, of course, it doesn't usually look like this. This is when it breaks, right? When it, when it hits land. But if we look over here, we can see a better example of it right here. What do we call this? And surfers, right? Uh, let's go surfing now where everybody's learning how, right? Surfers will use these to go surfing on. Very cool. We, of course, call it a wave. A wave. And waves move through the water like this, right? These are waves. It's like a hill, right? It says it's a hill. It's like a small hill. Of course, this is where the wave breaks, right? And this is a wave, but it's breaking. They don't usually go like this. They only do this when they hit 
land or rocks or something underwater that makes them do that. That's really unusual, very uh, unique picture. Okay, next one, 10. A very big boat. This is a very big boat, huge boat. Uh, you know, it's using an engine, so there's no sails on the boat, right? This, this uh, boat is moving by engine power, right? By gasoline. But what do we call this big boat? We call it a ship, right? A ship is a very big boat. Now, ships can have engines. Ships can also have sails, right? A ship is just a really big boat. If you're in a small rowboat with your friend going across the river, you're not in a ship. You're in a boat, right? But if you're on a really big boat, uh, you know, that has many rooms and can carry a lot of people or can carry a lot of things, then that is a ship. Okay, next one. 11. Wow, she's happy. She's got ton money to sail, right? She's got a lot of money, right? So, to find pleasure in. She's very happy. She's finding pleasure in money. I hope she finds pleasure in other things besides money, right? Uh, in her life, right? We can find pleasure in our friends. We find pleasure in spending time with our family, right? So what do we do when we're with our friends and we're having a good time or we're going camping with our family, everybody's having a good time, we say they are enjoying. They are enjoying themselves. To enjoy themselves means to have fun together. We are enjoying ourselves. If you go watch a movie, you can enjoy the movie. It's a good movie. Let's go enjoy a movie together. Okay? Enjoy. Next one, number 12. Now be careful with this one. We see these children, they are going across the street, okay? I just used the word there, from one side to the other side. If you're talking about from one side to the other side, let's say you have a cliff here and there's a river, there's another cliff, okay? And you build a bridge. This is a bridge, okay? Da 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 da, and we. Okay, I'm not a good artist, but anyway, that's a bridge. This bridge is going across, across, right? It goes from one side to the other, from one side to the other side. This is a cross. This line goes across the street. Be careful. Many students make a mistake. They say these children will across the street. Across is not a verb. These children are not acrossing the street. These children are crossing the street. To cross the street. So, if you are giving directions to somebody, you say, go to the intersection, then cross the street. Cross is a verb. Don't say across the street because that's not a verb. You can't tell somebody to across the street. Across is a preposition, right? It means from one side to the other. It's not a verb. Don't tell people to across the street. Tell people to cross the street. You should cross the street here at the light. Don't cross the street in the middle of the block. That's dangerous. Cross the street here, not here, here cross the street here. So be careful between a cross and cross. Don't make a mistake. The bridge goes across the river. People cross the street. Okay, please remember that. I hear many mistakes. Okay, next one. Number 13. So these kids are having fun, right? They got their bikes. What are they doing? Uh, well, here we have a definition here, a trip in a vehicle, such as a car, bicycle, or train. So it's an interesting word here, and the word is to ri a ride. Now, that's interesting. Ride can be a noun. A ride. For example, let's take a ride, right? Let's take a bike ride. Let's take a, uh, a ride in our car. Let's take a ride by train. That's a noun. But ride can also be a verb, right? Let's ride a bicycle. To ride a bicycle, right? So we're going to ride a bicycle. Ride in a car. Ride on a train, okay? But be careful. When you ride, you ride on a bicycle, right? You don't ride in a bicycle. <laughs> 
you can't ride inside the bicycle. That's very strange, right? You can't get inside your bicycle. You can ride on top of your bicycle. Ride on a bicycle. Ride on a train, but be careful. We say on a train, but we're not on top of the train. That's crazy, right? That'd be really dangerous. We're inside the train, but we say ride on a train. English is crazy sometimes. I'm sorry. What about car? Yeah, we ride in a car. We ride in a car. In a car. In, whoops, in a car. So be careful. We ride on a bicycle, on a train, but we ride in a car. That makes sense. Don't ride on a car, right? That's dangerous. Okay, so you ride in a car. So, ride can be a noun. Take a ride. Let's go on a bicycle ride. That's a noun or verb. Ride on a bicycle. Let's ride on a bicycle. Let's ride in a car. Okay, so ride can mean different things depending how you use it. Okay, next one. Ah, are you sleepy? I get sleepy when I look at this picture, right? Because helping you to rest, oh, very calm, very peaceful, nice wind, warm weather. There's a nice uh, hammock on the beach, beautiful scenery. What is this place? This is very relaxing, relaxing. How many sounds do you hear? Relaxing. Three sounds. Relaxing. Relaxing. Put them together quickly. Relaxing. Relaxing. Okay, so relaxing. Very calm, helping you to rest and go to sleep. You want to have a relaxing place when you sleep. If there's construction outside your house, <laughs> right, lots of trucks, people yelling, yeah, 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 like that. That's not relaxing, right? You want it to be quiet, dark, you know, then you can relax and go to sleep. Okay, next one, uh, underwater, right? The lowest part of something. Uh, maybe you're at the, uh, well, I don't want to say the word, but the very lowest part, right? Let's say you have the ocean, right? Here's the ocean. Well, imagine that's very big. And there's the water. We're talking about the lowest part of something, the lowest part. What do we call it? We call it the bottom. This is the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of the lake, okay? The bottom, bottom, bottom. So two sounds, ba Bottom, 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 okay? You can say bottom, you could do that, but most people just say bottom, bottom, okay? So the bottom of something is the lowest part of something, the bottom, okay? 16, a person who studies a science, a person who studies some kind of science. Of course, that's very easy. It's a person who studies science. We use this word and we make it a little bit different. Scientist, scientist, people who study things. You can use IST very commonly, scientist. First, let's concentrate on this word, scientist. How many sounds do you hear? Scientist, 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 scientist. Okay, so that's the word. And remember, IST is used for many things, especially when we're talking about science. People who study geology, what are they called? They are called a geologist. Uh huh, IST. People who study biology, bi Ologist. Wow, okay. What about people who study chemistry? Any idea? Chemist. 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 Okay? So, geologist, biologist, chemist. Okay? These are people, uh, usually you use IST to talk about the people who study these sciences. Okay? Okay. Let's uh, review the words. Let's do some word vocabulary exercises. How well do you remember the words? Let's go over them. What we're doing is we're going to use these words. We have four definitions, right? We want to write the word next to its meaning or its definition. These are our words. First of all, we have imagine, imagine, imagine. That's the first word. Sail is our second word, sail. Next, mystery, mystery, 
mystery, mystery. So mystery, and then we have calm, calm. Okay, those are our four words. We need to match them to our definitions. Number one, a puzzle or secret. Something that you don't know, right? We talked about this. I don't know. It's a, what is it? It's a mystery. I hope that question was not a mystery to you. You should know the answer right away. Uh, so it's not a mystery to you because we studied that before. Hopefully none of these questions are a mystery to you. Okay? Number two, not moving much. Something that doesn't move much, right? It kind of stays in the same place. Maybe moves a little bit, but not much. Doesn't move much. It is what? Calm. Calm. So a leaf on the water or the wind in the air. There's, it's not very windy. It's very calm. Okay? That's another way to use calm. Next one, number three, to picture in your mind. So you have many pictures in your mind and you're thinking of something. You're making pictures and you're, you're thinking of new things or fantastical things like magic or uh, different places, adventure, right? You're thinking about these things in your mind. You are imagining, to imagine. To imagine is to picture in your mind. Number four, to move by boat using wind. We talked about this, right? Uh, a boat that has a big piece of cloth and the wind blows that cloth and you move across the water. What do we say? We say that is to sail, to sail, to move by boat using the wind. Okay, well that wraps up our vocabulary section. Let's take a short break here. We'll come back and we'll look at a reading passage about the Pacific Ocean. So, take a short break. We'll come right back. Okay, welcome back everybody. Let's go over the reading passage. The reading passage is about the Pacific Ocean. Let's get started here. Look at this word that starts it. Imagine. Imagine. Remember we talked about to picture in your mind. So picture in your mind. You're not there, just picture in your mind. Imagine yourself on a ship. So in your mind, make a picture of yourself on a ship. You are sailing the biggest ocean in the world. So you're sailing across the biggest ocean in the world. Clear blue water surrounds you. Okay, so we have a couple of words here. Clear blue water. You can see through the water, right? And it's all around you on all sides, so it surrounds you. The waves are calm. The waves are calm. So there's not big waves, the waves are very small and they don't move much. The waves are calm. So do you know where you are? So this is all the picture that you imagine. You imagine all of this, right? It says imagine yourself on a ship, you're sailing the biggest ocean in the world, clear blue water surrounds you, the waves are calm. This is the picture you have in your mind. This is what you were imagining. Then the question, do you know where you are? After you picture this in your mind, do you know where you are? You're in the Pacific Ocean. You're in the Pacific Ocean because these things describe the Pacific Ocean. It's the biggest ocean in the world. It's usually calm and it's very clear blue water. So, the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean in the world. We, before we said it was the biggest ocean, you can also say it's the largest, same thing, docateo, right? Largest, biggest. It's, it's the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is a place. It is where, so it's a place, right? It's where half of all the water on earth is. That's interesting. I didn't know that before. If you think about the earth, the earth is really, really big. Now think about all the water on the earth. That's a lot of water. Half of that water is in the Pacific Ocean. That's really interesting. That's how big the Pacific Ocean is. It's so big. It's the largest, biggest ocean on earth. It's so big that it takes a whole day for a plane to fly across it. Now let's talk about this sentence. The Pacific is so big that it, it, what does it refer back to? Not the Pacific, right? If we say it takes, 
How long does it take? That's what we mean. How long, how long does it take? If we ask this, we're asking about time, right? How long does it take? How long does your trip take? It refers to your trip, right? When you start from point A and you go to point B, how long does it, how long does your trip take? That's what it means here. It means like a trip or a journey, a, tr a, a, a thing, when you travel from one place to another. The Pacific is so big that a trip takes, or a journey across it, takes a whole day, one entire day, for a plane to fly across it. It, of course, means the Pacific, the Pacific, okay? So the Pacific is so big that it, a trip across, it takes a whole day for a plane to fly across it. Wow, that's really far, right? Okay, next one. A boat ride, so, so before we said a plane trip, but now what about a boat ride? Planes travel a lot faster than a boat, right? Plane, boat, right? <laughs> a boat ride from one side to the other can take a few weeks, okay? So if you're in a plane, it takes a whole day, but if you're in a boat, it takes a few weeks. That's a lot longer. Some people prefer taking a boat, though. Though refers back to time. You think, well, a plane takes one day, a boat takes several weeks. People who want to save time, they'll take the plane. However, people, some people will want to take a boat, though, however, but, right? That's what though means. Even though it's faster to go by plane, some people prefer to go by boat. Why it takes several weeks? Well, it, it, that means the boat, the boat trip, right? It, taking a boat, that's the boat trip, it refers back to this. It can be very relaxing, okay? So if you take a boat across the Pacific Ocean, it takes longer, but it's more relaxing. Maybe you have a vacation, you have time, you want to relax. You can go fishing on the boat as you go. You can enjoy fresh ocean air. Ah, the air is very nice out on the ocean. You can see many beautiful sunsets and sunrises, right? It's all very relaxing. Two things that they mention though, you can go fishing, and you can enjoy the fresh ocean air. Okay, now we come to an, our next uh, passage here, our next part, Ferdinand Magellan. Ferdinand Magellan, do you know who he is? Do you remember from history? Ferdinand Magellan was the first European uh, to sail all the way across, well, the first person to sail all across the earth, all around the world, right? Ferdinand Magellan was the first to sail across the Pacific. Actually, well, his ship sailed all around the world. He didn't actually sail. He died in the Philippines. But anyway, his crew sailed across around the world, okay? His ships did. Okay, but anyway, he uh, was the first to sail across the Pacific Ocean, uh, the first European to sail across the Pacific Ocean. He also gave the ocean its name. So Ferdinand, he gave the ocean its name. Ferdinand Magellan is the person who named this big ocean for the first time. Well, it's the name that we know it by. At first, he didn't know what to call it. He didn't know what to call the ocean. Should an ocean have the same name as a person? What is this sentence about? This sentence is talking about what Magellan was thinking, right? When Magellan was sailing, he was you know, what should I call this ocean? Should I call it after a person, maybe his lover, right? Uh, back home, maybe his queen, maybe his king. A lot of explorers named things after their kings or queens or the people who gave them money to, to explore. So he was thinking, well, should I name uh, an ocean, that, uh, give it the same name as a person? He wasn't sure. That's what he was thinking, okay? So what did he do? He looked at the water. Magellan looked at the water and he saw 
the small calm waves. He watched them for a long time. Wow, these waves are very calm. They're very small. It's very peaceful here. Then he got a great idea. While he was watching the waves, aha, that's a good idea. What was it? He named the ocean Mar Pacifico. Mar Pacifico, right? Uh, that in English, Pacifico means peaceful and mar means sea, right? Ferdinand Magellan didn't speak English, right? He wasn't from England, right? He spoke a different language. But when he said mar pacifico in English, that meant peaceful sea. Pacifico means peaceful, calm. So that's why we call it the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean sea is the same as ocean. Although really, Sea sometimes is smaller, ocean usually is bigger. But the peaceful sea, that's the Pacific Ocean. And that's why he called, that's what the idea that he had. Well, the waves are small, they're calm, it's very peaceful. So I'm gonna call it the peaceful ocean. And that was his idea, it's a good idea, right? Okay, the Pacific Ocean is not only peaceful, it's also a mystery. So yes, it is peaceful. Usually, except when there's a big storm, then it's not peaceful, but usually it's peaceful. But it's also a mystery. The Pacific Ocean is a mystery. It's too big and deep for us to explore every part. Why is it a mystery? Because we don't know everything about the Pacific. It's too big. It's too deep. We haven't been able to explore, especially at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, right? Scientists think it, the ocean, has fish we haven't even seen yet. Some scientists think there are fish maybe deep in the ocean. We don't know anything about them. We haven't seen them yet. Who knows what we might find at the bottom? Who knows? We don't know. By the way, just a, a little side topic. Do you know the giant squid, Kun Ojingo? <laughs> Huge squid. They've never really seen a giant squid swimming at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. They've only seen dead giant squid that kind of float up to the top and go to the beaches. So that's one of the fish or the creatures that live in the Pacific Ocean that we don't know much about. There might be other strange creatures down there. So that's very interesting. Okay. Okay, let's go over reading comprehension. Number one, this story is about... What is this story about? What is the topic of this story? This story is about A, the Atlantic Ocean, right? No, I was making a joke at the beginning of this lesson, right? It's not the Atlantic Ocean. We're not talking about the Atlantic Ocean. That's in a different place, right? B, we're talking about sharks. Nope, that was a different lesson, okay? This lesson is about the ocean. It's not about the creatures in the ocean, right? So it's not about sharks. This story is about sailing. Did we talk about sailing? A little bit. We only said, you know, that uh, boats that move across the ocean with wind, those are sailing boats. And imagine yourself sailing on the biggest ocean in the world. But that was a very, very small part of the passage. This passage is not about sailing. This passage is about the Pacific Ocean, right? We talked a little bit about the fact that it's the biggest ocean in the world. We learned how it was named. We learned what scientists think about it, right? So we learned many things about the Pacific Ocean. So the answer is, this story is about the Pacific Ocean. That's what the whole passage was about. Okay, number two. In English, Mar Pacifico, Mar Pacifico means what? What did Ferdinand Magellan name the ocean and why? What does it mean in English? Does it mean blue ocean? Nope, it doesn't. Ocean, right? Mar means ocean, but Pacifico does not mean blue. It means something else. Does it mean dangerous water, right? No, it's the opposite of that, right? Pacifico does not mean dangerous, right? That's not correct. Pacifico means peaceful. And mar means sea or ocean. So sea is the right answer here, right? Peaceful sea. In English, mar pacifico means peaceful sea. Not whale's tail. <laughs> a 
that's kind of funny. Where'd that come from, right? They're just trying to trick you, right? Whale's tail. No, Mar Pacifico means peaceful sea. It's kind of switched around. Pacifico means peaceful, Mar means sea. Okay, so Mar Pacifico is peaceful sea. Okay, number three. The Pacific Ocean is so big that it takes, remember, a journey, you know, takes. It takes. How long does it take? It takes, A, a few weeks for a plane to fly across it. <laughs> That's impossible. Planes can't fly for a few weeks. They run out of fuel, right? They'd fall down. Well, maybe they could stop and get fuel, right? That's possible. But that's not with the passage in. Not a few weeks, a lot shorter than that. It said it takes a few weeks for a boat to sail across it, but not a plane, so that's not right. It, take, it's, it takes, B, a day for a boat to sail across it. And you see what they did? They switched the information. They switched it. So it takes a day for a plane to fly across it. So we can see that's not the right answer. A few weeks for a boat to sail across it. Oh, wait, did we see that before? Yeah, that's what I changed A to, right? A few weeks for a boat to sail across it. That's what I changed A to. So C is the right answer. It takes a few weeks for a boat to sail across it. That's the right answer. What's D? A few weeks to swim across it. You swim across the Pacific Ocean. That's crazy. You will die. Don't do that. Don't do it. Okay? So don't do that. Jugo soil, right? You will die. I'm sorry. I don't mean anything bad by that. But you will die, right? So don't try to swim across the Pacific Ocean. Nobody has ever tried to swim across the Pacific Ocean. That's crazy, right? Okay. Uh, I think somebody tried to swim across the Atlantic Ocean. I think they may have done it to swim. I'm not sure. Uh, I think there's been some, some tries. Okay, but anyway, the Pacific Ocean is too big. It's the biggest ocean. So the right answer is C. The Pacific Ocean is so big, it takes a few weeks for a boat to sail across it. Okay. Number four. Who gave the Pacific Ocean its name? So who named the Pacific Ocean? We have different people here and one thing. Okay, let's take a look. Scientists gave the Pacific Ocean its name. In the passage, do we see that scientists gave the Pacific Ocean its name? No, the passage was talking about scientists in the way that scientists don't know what fish are at the bottom of the ocean. It didn't say anything about scientists giving the ocean its name, so that's not correct. B, Mar Pacifico. Actually, Mar Pacifico is not a person, right? It's a thing. It's a trick. Mar Pacifico is the name of the Pacific Ocean, right? So Pacific Ocean means Mar Pacifico, right? So a name can't give its own name. That's crazy, right? That's not right. That's a trick. C, a mystery. We don't know. No, we do know. We do know who gave the Pacific Ocean its name. It's not a mystery. B, Ferdinand Magellan, that's the guy, right? He was the first person to sail across the ocean, the first European to sail across this ocean. He was wondering, what should I call this ocean? Should I name it after a person? But then he saw the calm waves, and he said it's very peaceful, so I'm going to call it the Pacific Ocean. Ferdinand Magellan gave the Pacific Ocean its name, which is kind of ironic because he died in the Philippines, which is on the Pacific Ocean. Interesting. Anyway. Okay, uh, Okay. so that wraps up our comprehension questions. Let's review very quickly the Pacific Ocean. What do we know about the Pacific Ocean? Well, first thing we know, it is the largest ocean in the world. It's huge. Half the water on Earth is in the Pacific Ocean. It's very, very big, right? It's a very big ocean. What else do we know? Ferdinand Magellan was the first to sail across the Pacific. He was the first explorer to sail across the Pacific. Unfortunately, he didn't make it back home, but he sailed across the Pacific. Okay, next one. It is a mystery. Why is it a mystery? Because it's so big and so deep that we don't know everything about it. Scientists are still studying it. There's a lot of things for scientists to find out about the Pacific Ocean. So it is still a mystery. Okay, well that's very interesting. Of course, if you ever get a chance, 
Go to the Pacific Ocean. Go to some of the islands. If you have time, take a boat. Sail across part of the Pacific Ocean. It's very beautiful. There are many beautiful places along the Pacific Ocean or by the Pacific Ocean that you can see. Okay, well, that wraps it up for this lesson. We'll see you next time, everybody. Take care.